Okay, today we're doing the Excel Module 3 SAM textbook. I click Start, start that assignment. So we have two files here. We have the book and the file that we'll need. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that one. I'm going to go ahead and open that. Once I do, I'm going to go back in here and get the name for this file by going over here to Continue and making sure I have this name right here. Copy that, bring it over to my Excel sheet, enable editing. Go in here, file save as, go to browse, go put this on my key drive. Let's see, yes, gee. I'm going to find the key drive, there it is. Then down to assignments, CS110, and then following my name. Okay, paste the name in, so that's the correct name, hit save. Okay, so this starts on EX3-6, and it talks about um, rotating text and fill handles. So when we start this sheet, so enter the worksheet titles and apply a theme. So select cell A1. I have selected type Manola, department, stores, and then comma, ink, capital I-N-C period. Make sure you get the comma and the period in there. Anyway, select A2, and this one is going to be 6. Oh, beeped at me. Continue typing the menu sequence from earlier version off. So anyway. Okay, so I'm going to go 6 dash month financial projection. Okay. And now we need to apply the slice theme. So I've got to go to page layout, come under themes, and they're in alphabetical order. So slice this right here after R. So I've now applied the slice theme to this. Now, they're going to have us go into cell B3. We're going to type January. If I spell it right, January. And enter that in. And once I enter that in, then we're going to click the entry dialog box home tab group so dialog box launcher so what they're talking about here is they say with c3 selected we need to do the format cells so we go up here to home and it's this alignment dialog box that we want alignment group we open this up and what they're going to have us do is do this rotation here now when you do this rotation they want 75 degrees it's just easier i think to click in this box and type 75 and that's all they need us. So we say OK, and that turns it that way. Now, once we click OK, we're going to use the fill handle to fill this clear out to June. So I grab my fill handle. That's March, April, May, June. So now they're all in there rotating. Now, the option fill below the lower right, when we come in here, they want us to hit this little option fill button. And they want to click auto fill options. So this fills it in. And option button to hide the autofill. So they're just showing us this here. So they don't do anything with it. So anyway, they're just showing fill formatting, fill without formatting. We'd have different choices there. And so click the option fill button to hide it. So what they want me to do is hide that. How? Anyway, I'm just going to go on in cell H3. So cell H3 here. We're going to have total. Okay, and then press the right arrow key. To move over and then type chart and I should be an I3 anyway the next couple pages talks about the autofill and that now to increase column width so move the pointer to the boundary between column A and column B and drag the tip to 38 I'll be honest when you do this you come up here and you click between these and try to hit that it's just easier to click here go to format go to cell column width and then type the size they want, 38.5, and hit enter. What we have to make sure is that we're in, you know, our formatting is in points, and it should be defaulted to that. If not, see me. But anyway, release the mount button, change the width of the column, click column heading B to select it now, and drag through column G. So they want us to select all these months. Move the pointer to the boundary here, and then drag the pointer to right until the screen tip is desired 15. Once again, so trying to drag in that, I'm just going to go to column width, type 15, hit enter. So anyway, um, now it says so that column H is visible. So they want us to come over to column H, make sure we can see column H over here. And step one to increase this one. So they want H to be 18. So I just come up here once again to go format, column width, and type 18, and hit enter. 
so much easier than trying to drag by 149 pixels or 18. Anyway, if necessary, scroll that column A row four is visible. So what they want us to do is come down here into this cell, and we're going to enter into this one revenue. Then I just hit my down arrow key to move down to the next cell, and that's going to be cost of goods sold. Down arrow key, and I'll do the indentation later on. Gross margin down two times and then they want expenses down arrow key bonus hit my enter key or down arrow key salary site rental marketing miscellaneous And then total expenses. Down two times, and I'm in 16 operating income. So once they do is type all these operating income down. Now I select A5. So I'm going to increase the indent here. So I come up here and there's increase and decrease. And I want to increase the indent once. Now I'm going to select A9 through A13 and increase the indent on these ones. Finally, to finish this, select A18 to finish entering the row titles and deselect the current cell. So, A18. I just now realized I put them all in the wrong spot. So, I'm just going to take these, go to the edge, and move them into the right. So, I could have cut and copied, cut, paste, but I screwed up. I wasn't in the right column when I typed them and didn't catch that. Anyway, now I'm going to select A18. With A18 selected, I'm going to type what? Dash if assumption make sure assumptions make sure you put an S on that now select A9 through A13 A9 through A13 make sure I select the right cells going too fast hit the copy button up here okay to copy the values and format now to if necessary, we're going to go down here to A19. So I'm going to scroll down here and we're going to paste that right down here. And hit my paste button. So now this should be pasted in all indented just like it shows on page 3-12. So once I get that, now to get the marquee off up above, you hit the escape key. And that took care of the marching ants around there. Anyway, so now we have that done. We'll go to EX14. So to insert a row, so right now they want me to click hitting 20. We need to insert a row. So with this selected, I can right click right in this cell, go up here to insert. And since I had the whole row selected, it knows to put a row. The row below where you want to insert the row, display the shortcut menu. So we click the insert shortcut menu to put a new row in. Select cell A20 and type sales revenue or bonus so we just entered that in and I want to make sure it indented because it kept the formatting from the other rows above now right click row heading 19 that's over here I'm gonna right click on this 19 and the row below where you want to insert the row display so this time we want to move this down and we're gonna hit the insert and we're gonna move that down and now with the format and then click the insert option. Now this one, format same as below option should have came up. So there should be, once I do this, there should be a little box that's saying here. As, and if it doesn't come up, don't worry about it. You know, when we did this, this right over here is where it is. I'm trying to find it, but format same as uh, below. So we'll keep that format. I could have just went back and indent. That's all it was. But anyway, with A19 now selected, we're going to type margin as the new row title. Now, I'm going to go up here and hit save. I've named it right, so I don't have to worry about naming it, what they say and all that. Now we're going to start putting values in. So, number formatting. So, we want to make sure we get these numbers right and we're in the right cell. So, we're going to start here on A19, the margin here. And we have 81.25 with a percent sign. Hit enter. And then 5,000. I'm not going to worry about putting the extra zeros in that. It'll do it for me when I do the setting. One, two, five, zero, and three more zeros. 
20%, and I want to make sure I'm on the salary line, 20%, percent sign, my hand won't reach that far, and then 10, and that's a percent, and 3.5%, once again, don't worry about the extra zeros, because we can add them in, it'll add them for us, and then 5%. So that's under miscellaneous. So I make sure I've got them all in. Now it wants us to make sure that we're in enter. If necessary, display the home tab. So click and cell B25. Now enter 14 and B4. So I got to find B4 and it wants me to enter this number. Oops. 1470500. Once again, I don't have to worry about the decimals next or as long as I get the right number in there. Right below that, it's one four zero oh, five three zeros, and then C four. Oops, I missed a cell there. So B four entered this. This should have been in C four. So I need to move this to the right cell. I could just retyped it, but I'm just going to move it over there. I need to be going across what I'm supposed to be doing. So then in March, it's one four nine eight three zeros, and I hit my right arrow key. And then one one zero oh, two three zeros, and finally one one four five three zero zero. Now I should be out to June G four. I screwed up again. Dang it! So this should be in G four. So let me go check my data. So this number's right. This number's right. This one is wrong. So I need to move all three of these over. So I'm just going to select them, move them over one. So I just go to the edge to move stuff, go back to March, and March should have been 186600. And what I'm doing is I'm looking at the book and the figures in here, and I'm just checking these really critically because if these numbers are off, all my form is going to be off. So I'm looking at the book numbers, and that's how I caught my error. So I'm making sure that I have the exact same numbers they do. Um, this one here I can tell is wrong, so I need to have a 900 right there. So it's imperative that you check these numbers, and if it makes you feel better, you can go in here and do this, do comma style. So I just hit this to make sure my numbers look just like the books for right now, even though it didn't tell me. So that way I can read these numbers easier and make sure I have the right amount of zeros and everything in them. Anyway, now I'm going to select H4, and I'm going to hit my auto sum button, and I'll sum them across. So that's what we want. And to create the sum should be 7808300. If my number would have been wrong, then I knew my other numbers were wrong. Anyway, now select cell H1. So over here, I'm coming up to H1 right here. And click the Insert Function button. The Insert Function button is right here. When I display this, the function that they want me to go is that it's the Now function. So if I just go up here, and you can just type, I should just start. If I hit Now hit go it will go find the now function in here instead of scrolling through and say okay now function will just returns today's date so what they want is click the or select category function then scroll down select the function once we do that say okay and it just has today's date now we're going to format that so to format that i come into my number dialog box i come down to dates and so the one they want me to pick is this one right here the third one down so I select that. Now right click H1 to display pop-up menu. Click the format cells on the shortcut menu. So I come down to format cells. This box pops up and that's how they got into this. So it really doesn't matter how you do it. I just always go up here and do this number of dialog box here. Anyway, we make sure that we have this. Now it wants me to double click the border between columns H and I. What they want me to do is auto fit column H. So instead of double clicking, I'm just going to click H, go up to format. So I find the format right here and go auto fit column width. Instead of double clicking between H and I, I think it's faster. So it's however you want to do it. Anyway, they talk about absolute and relative references. Relative is what we've been doing all along. Now we're going to learn about absolute. So on B5, when we come in here and we enter this formula. And the formula they're going to have is equals, and then it's B4, so I take the value in B4, and then it's times, and then shift 9, and then it's 1 minus B19, and now I hit my F4 key, it's up the very top key, not F and 4, it's the F4 
4 key, and it'll put dollar signs on this. This makes this an absolute reference. When I fill this formula, it will keep B19 in the deal. So now I can just put Shift 0 to finish that formula. Anyway, once I hit this Enter button, what I hope to see is 275718.75, exactly what the book has. Now we're going to go to B6, and we're going to do this equals, and it's just going to subtract B4 minus, and it's going to be this value here, B deal, and then I hit my Enter button, and hopefully what I see is 11947825 that they have in the book. Now, click B9. Let's make sure they don't want me to fill that. They might want me to fill them all across. So now I just show them two in there. I haven't filled them across for the whole. They both say under the January and cell. Okay, so now click cell B9. So we're going to put all these formulas in before we do. We're going to click the insert function and we're going to do the if function. So what we're going to do is come up here. I'm just going to type if. As soon as I do that and say go to the if function, I'll find it. And I'll say OK to look through the if button. And then it gives me the what if function here. And so what I want to do is in this top box, I'm going to put B4. And then it's greater than, equal to, and then it's B21. But I want dollar signs on that, so I press my F4. So I could have typed it with the dollar signs, or I could just let that. This one's going to be B20. Now the problem with this, when I go to the cell and I type B20, hit my F4 to put absolute on that one. So it's dollar sign B, dollar sign 20. And then finally you want the deal to be zero if it's false. So what's this going to check? If B4 is bigger than B21, you'll take the value of B20 put in that cell. If not, if it's false, B4 is smaller than B21, it'll put zero. So once we go OK, so B4, I'm just looking, must have been bigger than the, the other one. So B4 is greater than B21. If I scroll down here, B21 is 1,250,000. 1, so B4 is bigger than that. So just check to make sure my formula worked. And it shows 5,000 in the book. Now we type B10, or type equals, and it's going to be B4, and I could type there, click on it, times B22, and then I hit my F4 key because it wants absolute values on the B22. Once I do that, we press the down arrow key, and I see I have 294, and they show the formulas in the book, so I'm just going to go ahead and start typing these formulas in, and then I'll check my numbers afterwards. So the next one, site rental here, is going to be equals B4. And that's times B23, so B23 with absolute F4 key. Hit my down arrow key, and the next formula is equals B4 times B24, and put my absolute value on that one, put it in. And then the miscellaneous one is equal to B4 times b25 and then i'm hit f4 to put the absolute value on that finally the last total expense is going to be the sum so i'm just going to hit sum and it's sum from b9 to b13 so that's correct and hit that and put that in operating cost down here is equals b6 minus b14 and i put that in to check it okay so i have all them formulas in there now what we do is we're going to highlight just from here down to here. So I have to highlight these. Then I come down here and get the fill handle and drag this across to June. From here on out, it's just pretty much formatting. So Sparklines data, it should be pretty easy. So hopefully you'll be able to understand.